Welcome to Corporate School Dropout Podcast, a podcast dedicated to sharing the inspiring stories from people who have ditched the nine to five. A corporate school dropout is someone who wanted off the corporate ladder, who favors island time over island screensavers, and believes there's more to life than hating what you do Monday through Friday. Join your host, Lauren Allen, as she interviews dropouts each week to help you get inspired and motivated to make a change in your life. Make a change in your life. Hi there. Welcome to the Corporate School Dropout Podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Allen, and I am so happy you're here. Today I'm talking with Eric Olson, and it's a little bit different podcast than we have recorded before. We are going to follow Eric through his corporate dropout journey over probably the next year. So saddle up, and I hope you enjoy this ride and this journey with me and Eric. Thank you so much for joining me today, Eric. I really appreciate you being the guinea pig and the first time that we are going to follow somebody through their journey. Absolutely. Thanks, Lauren. Appreciate you having me on. So, Eric, can you give us an overview of your corporate career? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So I was not really... um, I was not really set up to be a, uh, a corporate school dropout. I kind of had the, uh, the upbringing of a lot of people from my generation, which was go, go to college, start with a good company, start a good career, work your way up the ladder, retire, get the gold watch. Um, I even still have the, uh, the gold pen and pencil set that my grandfather got when he retired after you know, 40, 45 years, whatever it was. Um, and that was just the way things were. That was uh, my upbringing. And I really didn't think of any other, I didn't know of any other way. And so um, that's what I did. I got into a, a good college, went to the military academy. After that, uh, it's a little bit different route. Uh, with going to the military after that. So I was in the army for 10 years. And that's the biggest, uh, the biggest organization in the world, the biggest bureaucracy. Um, and so I had fun with it, learned a lot of stuff, got to see some great things. Um, After about 10 years there, uh, I was spending too much time away from home. So I decided, all right, I'm going to go on and I'm going to do the corporate thing. So I got out, went to the largest private corporation in the world at the time, uh, Cargill. And um, same thing. I had a, I really was having a good time, had a, had a great boss, um, worked at a great facility doing stuff that I love, was doing maintenance and engineering. And, uh, that was, uh, I was really having a good time and I couldn't see anything that was going to take me off of that, that corporate path. Um, in my second job at Cargill, I got moved to a new location, moved to a new state. That's what brought me back to California. And um, all of a sudden I realized that uh, this corporate thing has a, has a darker side. Um, that's when I started seeing a lot of the corporate politics the, um, you know, the backbiting, the, uh, some of the dishonesty, just some of the stuff that gives a, a lot of corporations a bad name. Um, and I thought, well, you know, maybe this is just an isolated incident. So I went off and I, I went to work for another corporation, another large corporation, this time publicly traded. And, um, it was even worse. And so, (laughs) I I saw, I mean, it was like a magnification of the stuff that I was seeing at uh, my j- last job with Cargill. Yeah, I couldn't understand how these profitable corporations were so focused on um, unimportant things, on, on politics. And so I really kind of got disenfranchised with large corporations. And I decided, well, you know, maybe it's the large corporation thing. Maybe that's the problem. And so I started looking at small business. Um, and that's when, out of just pure luck, I got into consulting for the first time. Uh, great company, uh, BBSI, um, probably the smartest group of C-suite executives that I've ever worked with. Just amazing, amazing people. Um, and all I got, all, all I did every day was work with small businesses. And um, it was it was a ton of fun. It was so eye opening. Um, but I got to see the other side of the coin. (laughs) I got to see that whereas big businesses had the luxury to focus on what was unimportant, small businesses were 
just trying to stay afloat. And all they could do was, um, I, I used to say, just they could just try to put out the fire right at their feet before they got burnt. Yeah. And so they, they didn't have the time to look at any of the really, really great stuff they could be doing because of all the small stuff that was getting in their way. Um, so uh, from there, I got uh, the, really the impetus that took me down this path is I got the um, opportunity of a lifetime. You know, those great ones. It was go work for a local farmer. Uh, he wants to retire. I'm going to run the business. Um, he, you know, I want to, he wanted me to change the whole business and bring it up to speed for the, um, next generation and all of the stuff that I wanted to do really make a difference. Um, and I jumped at it. I just, I couldn't pass it up. And like so many opportunities like that, it was not at all what it was advertised. Right. And that was kind of the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, that was about a year ago. Uh, he backed out of the contract that he had with me. Uh, it just turned out really, really bad. And I decided, you know what, Einstein's definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. I had been doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting different results. And so for my last uh, little bit of time at the farm, I was working on all of my connections that I possibly could trying to figure out this late in life what is the world what in the world is going on with this whole alternate economy mm -hmm. what is this non-corporate gig economy whatever you want to call it what's the deal with this and how can I possibly make it work because I'm done with doing the same thing over and over again and I need to figure this out that's what got me here. Well, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, I have to, when you were talking about you have your, um, your grandfather's gold pen, I have my grandmother's. Yeah, that was, that was one of my Christmas gifts one year was that being passed down to me. And I'm like, and she worked for Bell South. Okay. And often talks about, well, she has Alzheimer's, so she has no concept of time. So she thinks that that was very recently uh, that she worked for the, um, uh, the phone company. So she still talks about it. Like that's how it works today. And I have to explain to her that, <laughs> that is totally, there is not a person on the other side plugging buttons anymore. So anyway, yeah, uh, she, she just doesn't understand it, but it's pretty funny. So well, I, yeah. I totally know what you mean of receiving that, you know, that gift that keeps on getting passed down year after year and generation after generation. Um, so one of the reasons why I was really excited to bring you on was to share this part of your story of like that it's not done. And we're still in that, like, how in the world are we going to make, or not we, you, how are you going to make this work? And because I think that this is a really important part that a lot of people in our audience are looking for of like, they've tried something and it didn't work. So maybe they go back to whatever they were doing. So maybe they go back to that insanity because at least it was stable. Yeah. And that is one of the hardest things to overcome is to keep in the fight. And I was thinking about it this morning of like, what separates a successful entrepreneur away from a person who um, is going to be unsuccessful. And the only thing that I could come up with is that successful entrepreneurs keep in the fight. Like they, they fail what they say, fail fast and fail often. Absolutely. Oh man, it hurts when you fail that first time, but no yeah. part of you said like, okay, let's just go back and do it all over again or go back to the insanity. Let's, let's just hop back on that corporate train. Talk about what that feels like for you right now. Yeah, for me right now, I, I mean, I guess maybe you could say I'm still going through that, that, that pain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had, uh, when I was working for the farmer, I, I came up with a great plan. And, you know, great plans rarely work out the way that you planned. Mm -hmm. So um, I was going to build up my nest egg. I was going to build up that, uh, that runway to start my own business. I was going to um, start on my connections, start on my client base. I was going to do 
basically a, a consulting and leadership training. And um, I had about 10, 11 months of saving money left to do, putting it all away and uh, laying the groundwork for this great business that I was going to start. And then the owner backed out of the contract and I was out of work with none of that foundation laid for my business. Um, but I decided, you know what, this is the time. It's crazy for me to go back and get another job. I don't have the runway that I need to start a business, but I'm just going to go out there and figure out what I can learn. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just jumped in. Uh, I think that within a week I had, you know, the structure for my consulting, I had contacts, I had stuff I was starting to send out. Um, I was really, really hitting it hard. Um, but my runway, the end of my runway was getting real close, real fast. And so I was throwing every line in the water that I possibly could just trying to trying to get something to extend that runway a little bit. Um, and in doing that, I actually reached out to someone that was a client of mine back when I was uh, doing consulting with BBSI. And uh, he does, his business is commercial insurance, commercial and personal insurance. And I asked him, I said, you know, do you have any clients that are in need of, um, of consulting services? Here's, here's what I'm offering. Here's what I'm doing he called me back in 15 minutes and said, come down to the office. We have to talk. Okay, great. So I went down to the office and he basically said, I want to offer consulting with my insurance services, but that's a couple years out. Would you want to sell insurance to get us there? I said, perfect. I can do that. Mm -hmm. So I went out and studied, got my insurance license and was selling insurance, uh, commercial insurance workers comp out of my uh, home office. And that extended the runway. And so I've been doing that now for about six months. Um, and then Corona hits. <laughs> Guess what? No one yeah. wants to talk about insurance. No. And so um, now I'm sort of back at square one. I, uh, you know, that's that next setback in, in addition. Now you can't go out and meet with anyone. You can't go out and have on-site training, which has always been one of my, one of my things that I love to do. And one of my things that I'm good at. And so I'm, I'm retooling again. Um, I have a, uh, another friend and a lot of this, and we'll talk about it. I'm sure later contacts, contacts, connections, mm -hmm friends, people you've worked with in the past are so important. But right. uh, I reached out to an old friend of mine and um, he has a consulting, a consulting business and a training business that was a hundred percent geared towards on-site training, on-site keynote speeches, all of that kind of stuff. And his whole summer with Corona just dried up. Mm -hmm. It went from a full summer that was going to make the next year to nothing. And so he was in the process of trying to figure out how to help through this time and in the process retool his business. And he asked me if I wanted to help. I said, absolutely. At some point, maybe it'll pay something. We don't know. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that it's a good, it's good experience. It's helping him out. It's uh, furthering connections and it's getting me closer to that spot where I want to be. Don't know yet where it's going to go, but just, I mean, right now, I think that the best description of what I'm going through and really have been for the last, you know, pretty much year, year and a half since I uh, decided to go down this journey is just put every single line in the water mm -hmm. and see what I can see what I can do to get there. I like that you say that because you keep showing up and I think that is, if that's not the key, I don't know what is because showing up every day for yourself, for your business, for your family, for those potential clients and those customers. Um, if you put your head in the sand right now, none of this would be happening. Like you wouldn't have met, well, you wouldn't have met me. You wouldn't be on this podcast. And 
I, I, I just can't speak enough for the power of showing up. And yeah. it is hard sometimes, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, it, it absolutely is. I mean, I, I would I would be lying to you if I didn't say there was a couple of mornings over the last, uh, you know, three, four weeks where it's just been, it's time to just stay in bed. I'm just going to pull the covers over and I'm just going to not get out today. But um, it, it's, you know, I think for me, a lot of it goes back to finding that uh, I've I've heard it called so many different things. I call it finding your why, your purpose, mm -hmm. what drives you, what motivates you, you know, all of those kind of things. And for me, what I realized that I never got out of my corporate jobs was that why of being able to dedicate myself to really helping people get mm -hmm. better. Yeah. And, you know, I was able to do some of it. I mean, I can remember people from 10, I mean, even 20 years ago in my army career that went to the next level in part because of a little bit of what I was able to help them do. And that's just, that's, that's wonderful. That, that's what keeps me going and moving down the path to where I can do that on a regular basis where I'm not, um, you know, shuffling PowerPoint slides and tweaking Excel spreadsheets to make the same numbers say something different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, can I do all of that? Yeah, but that's not that. That's really not my why. That's not what. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. And so, you know, every day, what's getting me up is that thought of, I have another day here that I need to get closer to doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And that, I mean, if that doesn't motivate you to get out of bed, nothing will. Yeah, absolutely. I know when I was um, running all of my projects back in my corporate days, it was really, really frustrating to be on a project, finish it, pass it off to operations and then go to the next thing. And then never really under, never really get to go back and say, how did it go? Like, it was always so fast and priorities were continually shifting. So you're right. Like when I started working for myself, the reason why I wanted to help people launch their businesses, because I knew that that was something I was going to be able to like follow from the end of time. And no matter what was happening, I would be able to follow it and be a part of it. And I didn't have to just stop. <laughs> yeah. And I think that full life cycle, um, you know, it, it really, for me, it goes back to that relationship. And sometimes it's with a person, sometimes it's with a group. Um, it can even be with a company. But um, I mean, I had the, the same thing. I, I went at the, you know, project management at, from a different side of, from you. I was doing the operations of it and they sent me to the, to the PMP course mm -hmm. to, you know, okay, you know, run the projects with your operations mind. Great but it still had the same problems. Yeah. It was still the project management people were looking at the numbers. They were looking at the, get this through within my metrics, pass it off. So I was like wearing both of those hats, you know, get it through it and give it to operations. Well, I just am giving it to myself. Yeah. <laughs> and, but I still had the exact same problems. It was still, uh, you know, I had a couple of great projects that were really long-term really changed the lives of the people that were having to use those pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. And those were so much fun, but they were so rare. Yeah. And, um, you know, to be able to see, and I mean, one of those projects, I just found out, uh, what, two years ago, the plant that I put it in closed. So all that effort and into all of those employees and the guys running it and it closed down. And, and so you're right with this whole getting it to go out and touch businesses, to touch business leaders, to touch owners, to touch frontline supervisors. I mean, my, I've always loved working with frontline supervisors. That's just one of the greatest, greatest thrills in the world is those folks that are actually down there doing the work day in and day out and getting them to realize their leadership and yeah. grab a hold of it and change 
absolutely change the world for their, you know, four, five, 10, 12, whatever people that are working for them is just, it's as good as it gets. I, I have no words other than it's just amazing. Well, I just got like, like the, not chills, but like, oh yes, like empowering somebody to see their own power and to harness their own power. Oh, you're right. Yeah. There is no better gift in the world. Yeah. And, it, and it's, you know, weird going into the way back machine. I mean, when I was, uh, when I joined the army, I had no concept that that was me at all. I mean, I was, I was, you know, in high school, I was pretty shy. I wasn't, you know, the, Hey, let's, you know, go team captain. Let's, you know, storm the castle gates or whatever. And, you know, early on when I, when I got the first time in the army where someone said, these people belong to you, you're responsible for making sure they succeed. And I mean that you could just about knock me over with a feather right there. It's like, are you kidding me? You, that really, you want me to do that? Mm -hmm. And realizing that effect you can have on people has been one of the greatest turnarounds in, in my life. And that, you know, that's probably the thing that most of all has got me to this, got me to where I am now is trying to find that place where I can have that effect, where mm -hmm. I can have that lasting reach that not only is it what's got me here, but it's also what keeps me going. Let's take a little bit of dive back to your dropout journey. So right now you are consulting with a company that we're hoping that it turns into something further. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, part of this, you know, my buddy, Chris, um, Chris Yeagle, if anyone wants to look for him out there on uh, LinkedIn land, but uh, he has his company, Diligent Plans. And um, he's been doing leadership consulting training for, uh, for a few years now. Uh, before that, he was with another company, um, Thayer Leader Development Group. Um, I mean, Chris has been training leaders for a long time, a great leader in his own right. Um, so, I mean, he's, he's got the background and he's been doing this for a while. Um, and he had a small group of people that he used with his um, training events, with his keynotes and some of those type things. But like anything, you know, he started his journey a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So he's a few years down the road, but you know, he's still in the building process of diligent plans. And uh, like I said earlier, his model is really in person. Um, you know, from the army, all of us have the background of real hands-on leadership. Let's go out, let's get in a location, and let's learn some leadership together really hands-on. Well, we don't know when that's going to be possible again. And so, you know, like I said, he's three years further down the road, but this thing upended his whole business too. And so by not being able to meet in person, not being able to do keynotes, not being able to do leadership training events – it was time to really revamp what he was doing to, um, to, to react to the current situation. And it just so happens that he was looking at it and trying to figure out how he was going to revamp. At the same time, I was looking at the writing on the wall saying, hey, <laughs> people aren't buying and they're not yeah. wanting to talk about insurance. You right. know, if, you've gotta, if the front doors are shut, you're not looking for insurance right now. And um, so I reached out to him um, and he's, he's been one of my mentors through this whole pro process. You know, when I, uh, when I'm going down the path and I'm looking out at the future saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this, this journey here, I reach out to Chris. And so, you know, he's been a, a mentor of mine for a little while on this. And so I reached out to him saying, this current situation has changed things a lot. I don't know where I'm supposed to go from here. And he said, well, I don't either. Let's work on it together. Yeah. And so um, he was in the process of reaching out to some of his other contacts and putting together a group. So we have six of us right now, um, all from a military background, um, although most of us didn't even know each other while we were in the, in the Army. But um, lots of folks with uh, combat experience, um, 
you know, post 9-11, uh, Pentagon, uh, all of just some incredible crisis situations. And we got together this, or Chris got together this group and said, you know what? We've all we've all led through really really difficult times. Um, it's not gonna get it's not gonna get any income, but we're gonna give free coaching, crisis mm -hmm. leadership. That's something that anyone out there, whether you're a frontline supervisor or a CEO trying to save your business, everyone needs that right now. Even if you only see yourself as a really hey, this leadership thing, maybe I should give it a shot someday. Even if you're only at that level, you know, maybe you're just leading your family. Maybe you're just leading, you know, who else? One other person that's looking to you for advice. And we have the background. And so we're offering free coaching, free leadership coaching to anyone that wants to go to the website and sign up. Totally can understand that that is something that we all need. I think especially watching it from kind of the being a small business and an entrepreneur, everything has shifted. And I don't all, I don't think it's all for the worst either. I think that there are a lot of great opportunities and a lot of really cool things that have happened over the last month. And so I, I have, yes, I think the world has changed, but I don't think it's terrible. Yeah, for sure. And, and one of the things is that, uh, you know, adversity really breeds innovation. You know, as I've been going through trying to, you know, just talk to people and tell them, hey, we're going to be okay. I did a little bit of research on what innovations came out of the 1918 flu pandemic. Basically, all of the modern medical precautions that we have today, those innovations came out of the 1918 flu pandemic. The Roaring Twenties, you know, out of World War II and the Depression came the greatest generation. All of this, all of this progress came from times of great adversity. Yeah. And it's through the people that saw the opportunity in that adversity. The the remote learning. You know, all of all of the kids that are now learning from home and having to keep up on all of their schoolwork from their kitchen table. Yeah. That's a that's a great opportunity in being self starting because you have to not put it off even when you can. Well, I think um, I've shared, um, I'm sheltered in place with my, my brother's family and his two kids. And what I've seen over the last, now we're in, we're in week four, they're learning, how, they're learning how to structure their days for success. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've seen like right now they're on spring break. Uh, yeah on spring break. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's just no, there's no school happening. There's no mandatory school happening, but school is happening every day. And that's something that I would have never seen before this. And I've seen the resilience of them with a schedule. Like they, yeah. uh, they know like if it's on the schedule, there's no question. It's we're moving on to that next task. And I see that as part um, very entrepreneurial in spirit as well of like, we have to learn how to have our own schedule when there was nobody saying, Lauren, this is how you run your business today. Yeah. And what I, I really appreciate seeing that now is that seeing these, these kids do it because it's something that they have had to adjust in the last few weeks as well. Yeah, um, sure. That was nothing that they had ever experienced before. Like they knew how to get up and go to school, but other, everything else was just like play. <laughs> and now it's so different and you know there's a million um things that we can kind of compare that entrepreneurial spirit to yeah. but one of the one of the big things is just structure um, yeah it well and one of the one of the things that i'm i'm seeing right now that's coming out of this that i absolutely love putting in the effort to not just let friendships and connections happen but to prioritize that connection with another person even when it is over a video chat that has been a great thing that's come out of this whole this whole situation and again it ties into being a, an entrepreneur and business owner because those are the those are the two things that you cannot let slide right now and so i think it's such an interesting so not only are we still in your journey but we're in your journey with 
a global pandemic. And, and so we're like, okay, what are all these learning, learning lessons that we can take and then transfer them back to building that business? And I like, um, we met through LinkedIn because of connections that we had made um, in person and online. So how can you continue to take those, those connections to thrive? Yeah, no, I think that's a, that is an incredible, that is an amazing question because it has so much that you can do from it. Um, you know, social media gets and much deserved often a bad name, but I have had so many great connections that I've made through LinkedIn people that I've been able to um, trade expertise on mm -hmm. people that have been able to call up when they're going through a problem and say, Hey, I'm going through this. Do you have any advice? people that I never, ever would have met otherwise that grow those connections and give you a different perspective. And learning from that different perspective, one of the things that some of those folks at BBSI, some of that great C-suite taught me, is they would always say childlike curiosity. You need to go out there with childlike curiosity. And, you know, I love that mental picture. I, I think in mental pictures. Mm -hmm. And that kid that walks up to someone and don't know, don't know anything about them. It doesn't matter if they're wearing a three piece suit or if they're wearing, you know, grubby work clothes and find out about that person. When you're an entrepreneur, you have to do that with your clients, mm -hmm. your colleagues, your employees, your connections, using, using the social media tools to find those people that, even if you never talk to them, you know, some of the folks that I, you know, follow on LinkedIn, you know, Tim Ferriss, you know, guys like this, that I'm, there's a, probably a pretty good chance I'm never going to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with Tim. But these guys that just by following what they put out, it motivates me mm -hmm. to do something new, to look at something a little bit different way. And that childlike curiosity of learning how people see things differently and how to do things differently, I think is one of the greatest things that an entrepreneur can uh, develop a habit to do. Oh yeah. I think um, even before the COVID-19, I think um, becoming, an, becoming an entrepreneur has definitely made me more resourceful. Um, every time that I can come up against a, a roadblock, if I just kind of, I, I call it my Ikea, uh, I, <laughs> Ikea furniture situation. Every time I get stuck at a stinking like bolt, if I just walked away from it for just a moment, clear my head, come back to it, it the answer was always there. And I yeah. feel like it's the same kind of concept of um, the answers are all, not to be all woo-woo, but the answers are always within you when you can take a step back from kind of the frustration um, and see past that roadblock. And yeah, maybe that is taking a nap. Maybe it's taking a walk. Maybe it's talking with somebody, networking, like whatever it is that takes you out of that situation to give you fresh eyes. And then you can come yeah. back to it. And I feel like now more than ever, being an entrepreneur, I've has enabled me to move quicker and more resource, be more resourceful on a daily basis versus getting stuck constantly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And all, you know, this is a good, good plug for what, what you do and what I'm trying to do. But I think another huge thing is talking to someone. Yeah. You know, I remember uh, one of my clients had a, uh, was a small towing company, you know, 10, 12 employees, something like that, uh, towing, you know, greasy, dirty, just, uh, you know, real, you know, blue collar kind of, kind of business. And one of the things that um, after a few meetings with them, the owner said, they looked at me and said, how is it that you know so much about towing? <laughs> And of course, that, that, was, that was one of those questions that I really wasn't ready for. Because the first thing that went through my mind is, are you crazy? I don't know anything about towing. But I was just there to bounce things back to them and ask them questions. Right. And they had that answer. This owner, she had the answer within her. 
I just asked her some questions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you have someone that you can bounce those questions off of, and you know, that person that can just listen, ask a couple of really good questions and take you down that path that you already have the answer to, but you've got to work through how to get there because you don't know that you have the answer. Having a mentor, having a coach, having a, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like to use consultant all that much because that has some different connotations, but having that mentor or coach, having that person that you can reach out to is so critical, especially for that entrepreneur when there's a lot of things that you can't discuss with anyone that you're around interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't, you know, you can't tell your, you can't ask you one of your employees, Hey, what do you think? Should I uh, shut down the business and totally <laughs> pivot over to an entirely different thing, which puts all of you guys out of work? Yeah, it may not be an easy conversation. <laughs> no, that, that probably won't turn out well. well. Absolutely. Well, I really look forward to interviewing you in a couple of months. Um, we'll have to figure out what that cadence is going to be, but I want to hear all about how the businesses are taking off and what you're learning throughout the process. I know kind of today was like that baseline of like, this is kind of where we are. We're talking about leadership. We're going into consulting. Um, so I'd really love to see, you know, what you're doing in a few months and share with the audience some big lessons learned and how the pivot of COVID-19 has impacted you and your life. Well, yeah, thank you for having me on. And, you know, I too am looking forward to figuring out what this is going to look like a couple months from now and a couple months after that. Um, but part of the process is just the journey and learning from that. And so, uh, you know, even during this conversation, being able to talk through some of the uh, what's going on, gives some perspective and hopefully it helps other people out there and we'll uh, be back here soon. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Eric. I know it's a little bit different and I appreciate that you are on this journey with me and trying something new. It'll be fun to listen to his episodes over the next year and follow his dropout journey. So if you enjoyed what you were listening to today and have enjoyed other podcast episodes, I'd really love a review and rating over on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. I appreciate your support and we will see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Corporate School Dropout Podcast. 